East of Eden by John Steinbeck continues. During the following months, a gradual change came over Fay's house. The girls were sloppy and touchy. If they had been told to clean themselves and their rooms, a deep resentment would have set in, and the house would have reeked of ill temper. But it didn't work that way. Kate sat at table one evening that she had just happened to look in Ethel's room, and it was so neat and pretty, she couldn't help buying her a present. When Ethel unwrapped the package right at the table, it was a big bottle of Hoyt's German, enough to keep her smelling sweet for a long time. Ethel was pleased, and she hoped Kate hadn't seen the dirty clothes under the bed. After supper, she not only got the clothes out, but brushed the floors and swept the cobwebs out of the corners. Then Grace looked so pretty one afternoon that Kate couldn't help giving her the rhinestone butterfly pen she was wearing, and Grace had to rush up and put on a clean shirtwaist to set it off. Alex in the kitchen, who, if he had believed what was usually said of him, would have considered himself a murderer, found that he had a magic hand with biscuits, he discovered that cooking was something you couldn't learn. You had to feel it. Cotton Eye learned that nobody hated him. His tub-thumping piano playing changed imperceptibly. He told Kate, It's funny what you remember when you think back. Like what? she asked. Well, like this, and he played for her. That's lovely, she said. What is it? Well, I don't know. I think it's Chopin. If I could just see the music. He told her how he had lost his sight, and he had never told anyone else. It was a bad story. That Saturday night, he took the chain off the piano strings and played something he had been remembering and practicing in the morning, something called Moonlight, a piece by Beethoven, Cotton Eye thought. Ethel said it sounded like Moonlight, and did he know the words? It don't have words, said Cotton Eye. Oscar Tripp, up from Gonzales for Saturday night, said, Well, it ought to have. It's pretty. One night there were presents for everyone because Faye's was the best house, the cleanest, and nicest in the whole county. And who was responsible for that? Why, the girls. Who else? And did they ever taste seasoning like in that stew? Alex retired into the kitchen and shyly wiped his eyes with the back of his wrist. He bet he could make a plum pudding would knock their eyes out. Georgia was getting up at ten every morning and taking piano lessons from Cotton Eye, and her nails were clean. Coming back from eleven o'clock mass on a Sunday morning, Grace said to Trixie, And I was about ready to get married and give up whoring. Can you imagine? It's sure nice, said Trixie. Jenny's girls came over for Faye's birthday cake, and they couldn't believe their eyes. They don't talk about nothing else but how it is at Faye's. Jenny's sore. Did you see the score on the blackboard this morning? Sure I did. Eighty-seven tricks in one week. Let Jenny or the nigger match that when there ain't no holidays. No holidays, hell. Have you forgot it's Lent? They ain't turning a trick at Jenny's. After her illness and her evil dreams, Faye was quiet and depressed. Kate knew she was being watched, but there was no help for that, and she had made sure the rolled paper was still in the box, and all the girls had seen it or heard about it. One afternoon, Faye looked up from her solitaire game as Kate knocked and entered the room. How do you feel, mother? Fine. Just fine. Her eyes were secretive. Faye wasn't very clever. You know, Kate, I'd like to go to Europe. Well, how wonderful. And you deserve it. And you can afford it. I don't want to go alone. I want you to go with me. Kate looked at her in astonishment. Me? You want to take me? Sure, why not? Oh, you sweet dear. When can we go? You want to? I've always dreamed of it. When can we go? Let's go soon. Faye's eyes lost their suspicion and her face relaxed. 
Maybe next summer, she said. We can plan for it next summer. Kate. Yes, mother. You, you don't turn any tricks anymore, do you? Why should I? You take such good care of me. Faye slowly gathered up the cards and tapped them square and dropped them in the table drawer. Kate pulled up a chair. I want to ask your advice about something. What is it? Well, you know I'm trying to help you. You're doing everything, darling. You know our biggest expense is food, and it gets bigger in the winter. Yes. Well, right now you can buy fruit and all kinds of vegetables for two bits a lug, and in the winter you know what we pay for canned peaches and canned string beans. You aren't planning to start preserving. Well, why shouldn't we? What will Alex say to that? Mother, you can believe it or not, or you can ask him. Alex suggested it. No. Well, he did. Cross my heart. Well, I'll be damned. Oh, I'm sorry, sweet. It slipped out. The kitchen turned into a cannery, and all the girls helped. Alex truly believed it was his idea. At the end of the season, he had a silver watch with his name engraved on the back to prove it. Ordinarily, both Fay and Kate had their supper at the long table in the dining room, but only on Sunday nights when Alex was off and the girls dined on thick sandwiches. Kate served supper for two in Fay's room. It was pleasant and a ladylike time. There was always some little delicacy, very special and good, foie gras or a tossed salad, pastry bought at Lang's Bakery just across Main Street, and instead of the white oilcloth and paper napkins of the dining room, Fay's table was covered with a white damask cloth and the napkins were linen. It had a party feeling too, candles and something rare in Salinas, a bowl of flowers. Kate could make pretty floral arrangements using only the blossoms from weeds she picked in the fields. What a clever girl she is, Faye would say. She can do anything, and she can make do with anything. We're going to Europe. And did you know Kate speaks French? Well, she can. When you get her alone, ask her to say something in French. She's teaching me. Know how you say bread in French? Faye was having a wonderful time. Kate gave her excitement and perpetual planning. <laughs>